I really like playing Third Strike. At this point, I play every character a bit, and have at least some character-specific tech for everyone. But I also love learning about off-meta stuff, and my curiosity for the series' history makes me want to take a look at the game's previous entries. New Generation was the most current Street Fighter game for only about a year, before it got in parentheses replaced by Second Impact. But like how there's things unique about Championship Edition and Hyper Fighting to Super Turbo, I feel like it might be fun to check out if there's more to New Generation than just the haha -ha, funny Ibuki Infinite and the same two or three combos that are being posted around. I've been loving the game for about a week or two now, and I found a bunch of stuff I think is interesting enough to be documented. And since I've always wanted to watch a video about this kind of thing, here yeah, I'm making one myself. I've never done a scripted video as long as this, I already made one with planned voiceover at all, so please feel free to leave your opinion and suggestions in the comment section. In the video I'll take Third Strike as a basis and see what changes I find in New Generation. I don't have any notations for all the combos, but you can see my scuffed inputs in the lower left corner. If you can't make out what I did, feel free to leave a comment and I'll try to help you out. In the video I included a bunch of character specific combos. For the most part I didn't test these on everyone, so they may work on more characters than what I state. Vice versa, combos I assume to work on everyone may drop out on some characters. There surely is a lot I didn't try or even think of trying, or changes I didn't notice are deemed worth talking about. So the game has a lot more to offer for sure. If you see any misinformation in the video, please leave a timestamp and correction in the comments. I'll try to make a pinned comment including corrections if needed. The first thing I notice is the parrying speed, which seems to be much faster than Third Strike. Not the difference between New Generation and Third Strike here. In the top right corner you can always see the logo of the game that's currently being shown. There's another big difference however. Take a look at this. In New Generation you can parry any attack that's not an overhead or a low in either direction. This includes supers and projectiles so you can do stuff like this. Some attacks, like most light normals and TPs, can be parried either way in Third Strike as well. But a big part of the parry system is that it's riskier to go for a parry than just blocking an attack. Part of the reason is that a lot of mids can only be parried in one direction. New Generation doesn't have this, so guess parries are bound to be much stronger, and I think it'd be more important for characters to have actual overhead and low attacks. What's more, in the air you also have two types of parries. The forward parry lets you keep your vertical momentum, but bounces both characters away from each other until they hit the ground. The down parry makes you bounce upwards and forwards instead. When jumping back, however, you bounce up and back. With two air parries you can, for example, tap down during your early jump, then tap forward during your late jump, making it harder for the opponent to enter air you. The parry windows are also different. Here's what I found out. The numbers indicate the amount of frames between the parry input and the incoming attack connecting. Parries seem to be slightly stricter than the third strike, but being able to alternate between two parries for almost everything should outweigh this easily. Note, however, that you cannot red parry in new generation. Stun resistance seems to be more universal than Third Strike. Most characters seem to have the same amount, but three characters have more than the rest. Odo and Dudley have a little more resistance to stun, and then Alex has a bit more than those two. There don't seem to be any characters that are more susceptible to stun than the norm. EX moves got added in second impact, so new generation doesn't have those. Meaning, like Goki in Third Strike, the only way to spend your meters by doing supers. So rather than the amount of EX it gives you to play around with, you pick USA based on just the super itself. Speaking of supers, except for Alex's SA1 and 2, Ibuki's SA2 and Odo's SA1, you can quick rest all of them. Of course, this greatly affects the pressure you get after landing a super. One more thing that's totally unnecessary knowledge, but I wanted to share anyways. You can Kara cancel things later in New Generation than in Third Strike. So late, in fact, that you already get the meter for the normal you're whiffing. If you Kara cancel on the same frame that you get the meter, the game takes it away from you again. But if you do it one frame later, you get to keep it. If you do it one frame later than that, you won't get the special move anymore. This seems to work with a few normals in the game. Taunting in Third Strike gives characters special effects. Dudley throws his rose and increases his damage on his next attack or combo. Otto actively recovers his stun, and so on. Like EX moves, taunts got added in second impact, so taunt effects aren't in this game either. Unlike Third Strike, Throws in new generation are done by holding forward or back and pressing a button, usually heavy punch or heavy kick, so it's the same as it's in SF2. 
This means that instead of a throw with animation, you get the respective normal instead, and that there are no Kara throws in New Generation. There also is no tacking, and if both characters throw in the same frame, they will just get their normals instead. In third strike, universal overheads are done by pressing medium punch and medium kick together. In new generation, they're done by pressing down, down, followed by any button. Throughout the video, I'll be using Alex as the dummy for universal overhead footage. Since he's the tallest character, I assume most things to work on him to work on the rest of the cast as well, if not potentially more. In third strike, resetting an opponent to a super lets them parry out of it. In new generation, however, they can't parry out, so the combo will just continue. This is huge and allows for much better guaranteed combos against airborne opponents. It also kind of plays into new generation's air parries, making jumps less risky. If you still get anti air many characters have better ways to punish you for your jump. Ryu is lacking his forward hard punch. It shouldn't matter though, since he never uses it in third strike anyways. He still has his overhead and his target combo. His fireball is a different sprite than in third strike, but that's about it. His tatsu goes a lot farther, especially the light version, doing two spins here. Heavy tatsu goes full screen. His heavy DP has two hits instead of one. Like most multi-hit DPs, it can drop the second hit at range and leave you unsafe. For starters, here's some basic meterless combos. The stun's pretty good. You can combo most mediums to medium donkey kick. Be careful though, it can drop at range against most crouching characters. Speaking of range, crouching medium kick to Hadouken has a ton of pushback and may be hard to punish for some characters. Since there's no red parries, going for this should be more viable than a third strike. Of course, fast long range attacks can still punish it. SA1 only has one bar. Actually, all of his supers only have one bar, making Ryu the only character without any multi bar supers. As you'd expect, SA1 is his best tool to punish at range. Short Shot Super still works, but chaining two crouch lights together is a lot tighter in this game. Don't take it for granted in a new generation. The change to Heavy Shoot you can makes DP to SA1 actually connect properly. You'd think SA1 is a great anti air conversion. Sadly, it seems hard or impossible to juggle it properly. SA2 is much better at that. Either you get a high connect with a follow up, or a low connect without one. The range feels better than third strike, but it's still close range overall. What makes it a bit more threatening though is this. If you look at Ken's inputs in the lower right corner, he starts blocking during the flash, but still gets hit. If you hold back a little earlier, you can still block. but by the time you perceive the flash, it'll be too late. There's a few supers in the game that aren't blockable post-flash, and I'll try to show all of them once we get to them. Near the corner, you get a touch of death on most characters. As you can see, you can even build enough meter to get your super back by the end of it. On Alex, you still get a TOD, but need him in the corner for that. It's an explosive super, offering him his best anti-air conversions. Dungeon feels the most different, since you can't charge it manually. Stick inputs do nothing, and pressing or letting go of any button makes you fire it off. 
It isn't as bad as it sounds though. The stun is massive. Check out how much stun even just three hits do. Since there's no red parries in new generation, you can confirm into the engine even on block for a chunk of stun. With the jump in, you get a touch of stun. With Ryu's overhead, you can go into SA2. SA1 doesn't seem to work on Alex, and I didn't test the engine. New Generation Ryu has strong damage and stun output. All the supers feel like they have a purpose, even here. One for its good range, two for its great burst damage and air conversion possibilities, and three is still dungeon. Ken is missing his forward heavy kick. He still has his back medium kick, but it's on forward here. He also still has his hold medium kick overhead. Hadoken has a different sprite, like Ryu's. Unlike Ryu, his Tatsu doesn't go completely full screen. His light DP has more recovery, so Ken can't do double DP combos on the ground. He can still Kara DP, but it's on the fourth frame of Crouch Heavy Kick and doesn't seem worth it at all. Look at the shadows to see how little you move forward in new generation compared to 3S. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, unlike 3S, you can't ride the bottom gate to do DPs in new generation, but you actually have to hit forward, down, down, forward punch. As anti-air, double DP still works. On good connects, you can even do Crouch Heavy Punch to DP. His target combo to light DP whiffs on many characters, so Tatsu can be his best ender. Target combo to light DP still works on Alex, Twins, Ibuki, and Elena, but it's wonky on her. On Alex, you can even confirm short short to DP. SA1 has one stock and is post flash unblockable. Its reach isn't bad, but you already know it'll be outclassed by SA3. I wanted to take a look at SA1 for its anti air capabilities. But it's not that great, sadly. SA2 carries two stocks for some reason, and it's also post flash unblockable. You may not expect it, but its reach is really good in this game. And as you expect, it's also really good for anti air conversions. Shipu only stocks two bars, so New Generation did something right at least. Of course, to make up for it, it's also post flash unblockable, with disgusting reach to boot. It also still has the range and speed to punish a lot of things with ease. And he can still confirm into it easily. But, his overhead doesn't combo into Shippu anymore. Instead, he'll have to use the hold version, which is considerably slower. On the upside, his Shippu combos do noticeably more damage than stun. In the corner, he can get some cool anti airs.
And on Twins, cancelling Light DP to SA3 always gives you this kind of juggle. For Ken, Universal Overhead works to all of his supers. While Ken doesn't have his Overhead to SA3 confirm and his double DP routes, both SA2 and SA3 still seem really strong and he has a bunch of good conversions for anti-S. And getting those DP loops on airborne opponents feels really nice. Sean is a stun monster. He has some tools that are clearly broken, and others that seem worse than in third strike. He has no far heavy punch, so the close version always comes out, which honestly doesn't seem too bad for him. Forward heavy punch is absent as well. His medium kick has the same animation as his light kick and can be cancelled to specials. Sean's far heavy kick is the one from his target combo, which he doesn't have here. Instead he has Ken's, but he can't cancel out of it. In general, he has noticeably faster normals than third strike. Holding forward or back while doing medium or heavy normals makes him build extra meter. This works during combos as well. Of course, this is incredibly broken and makes him able to build meter insanely fast. As a result of this, keep in mind that he should have access to his supers more easily than any other character in the game. Sean also has a huge downside, however. His crouch light kick doesn't chain. So unlike Ryo and Ken, he can't confirm his lows at all. He's also the only character for whom I didn't find any universal overhead conversions against Alex, so his high-low game is certainly lacking a lot. But I think he more than makes up for it with his strong mids and meter axes. Sean's tackles all do the same damage and stun, but differ in the range they travel. Light is 21, medium 25 and heavy 29 frames startup. The frame data may not be 100% accurate, but should be in the right ballpark. Unlike Third Strike, his wheel kicks also have different startup frames. But at 33 frames for the heavy and 41 frames for the light version, they are stupidly slow. His DPs have a really cool looking second hit. Light and medium do a punch down. For heavy, the animation is slightly different. These always come out and give him better Okion hit than in Third Strike. Sean's Tatsu does insane stun. Heavy kick usually is the best version to use. On crouching opponents, it can whiff at the distance, so be careful. When jumping in on crouchers, it can with two. In that case, use the medium version instead. Unlike in third strike, you can combo from close heavy kick into light tackle. Since it works on standing and crouching opponents, it's a good alternative to doing tatsu. I'm not sure where else to put this one here, but I think it looks funny. SA1 holds free stocks and helps Sean punish stuff at range. Since he builds meter like crazy, he'll probably have this option available more often than not. It's probably one of the best anti-air conversion tools in the game, since you seem to be able to convert into it from any distance. Confirming it is easy too. In jump-in combos, his SA1 does less damage than his meterless routes. 
but I guess that just lets him focus on using a super for all the other situations. SA2 also holds 3 stocks, because why not? It's also post flash and blockable. If you hit it from up close, it loses out on some hits in the second half. From farther away, the first hit doesn't connect, and the latter half has a lot more hits. If you do the Peter Super, the final hit allows for follow-ups in the corner, just like in Third Strike. Most one-hit confirms from SA1 should work, but it may drop out on the longer range ones. But as it seems to be the case with all DP Supers, the range is far from bad, but anti-air conversions aren't that great, especially considering you have SA1. In the corner, you can go ham. SA3 stocks two bars, but they're quite long. If you hit it, the game gives you a bit of meter back at the end of it. Look at Sean's bar. It doesn't work with DPs at all, and of course you can't really enter air with it either. I think its main benefit is just to punish things at range. Sean's insane meter building and meterless stun output make him a top tier character for sure. He has poor high-low mix-up, but I think it makes him more interesting than if he didn't have this weakness. Sean's SA1 really helps with his anti-air game and lack of range punishes against crouching opponents. SA2 still helps a little with each, on top of giving you more opportunities to be flashy. He's a scary character to fight for sure. Dudley doesn't have anything in new generation he doesn't have in third strike, but there's a few things missing. First, his forward medium punch is gone. Then, his target combo crouch light kick, crouch medium punch, crouch heavy punch is missing. But he's also missing his backswing blow. It's a cool move, so it's a shame he doesn't have it. Cross counter is much slower than in third strike, making it possible to be blocked after being triggered. This happens mostly against lights and low jump ins. Medium and heavy machine gun blow don't combo from any button. The best you can do is stand heavy kick. Or better, stand medium punch to let machine gun blow. On the upside, if they block it, they can't red parry the last hits and punish you. In third strike, crouch heavy kick gives you a nice struggle to machine gun blow, mid screen and in the corner. On some characters, you even get to do scoop loops, like on Dudley himself. Both of these only work against very few characters in New Generation, so your most consistent route is going to be the ducking upper. But Dudley is far from bad in this game. Let's look at some of his good stuff. His medium kick heavy kick target combo is mad plus, so you can link out of it and get nasty damage and stun. Going for back to back light machine gun blows and airborne opponent still works and seems easier to keep going. And in the corner, you still get something. Actually, a lot. Ducking upper only adds two to the juggle counter, so you can do three of them. It also means that if you enter air with ducking upper and it only hits once, you can do it three more times. On Dudley, and only Dudley, the medium kick heavy kick target combo is even more plus, allowing for new links. It's so plus in fact that you can link it into itself for up to 5 reps, for a touch of death that only works in mirror matches. I used SA2 here because I don't have any other clips to show with it. It mainly lets him punish things at high range. Just like in Third Strike, SA1 holds two stocks. 
And it's post flash unblockable, as you may have come to expect from the P supers. If you get hit by a jump in, you can watch your character melt. While the range may not be amazing by itself, of course you can still kind of make up for it with ducking. Naturally, this only applies to reacting to with things, and you may have more trouble punishing things with it on block. Thanks to ducking and air resets comboing to supers, SA1 is amazing for anti conversions. In third strike, these routes would be resets you can parry out of at worst, but here, there's just guaranteed damage. Thought Chan had an easy time confirming a super? It's harder to find moves for Dudley he can't confirm out of than those he can. And on top of that, in the corner you can get a touch of death with one bar. On Alex it still works, but you need to spend both bars and the combo's a good bit tighter. Three stocks for SA3, the bar's a bit shorter than for SA1, nothing unusual here. Like SA1, it's unblockable post flash. SA3 is known to do less damage than SA1, but the jump in route still does a lot and you get surprisingly close to stun. All the same confirms that work with SA1 should still work. But due to SA3's extra range, you get even more confirms. For instance, you don't even need to react to forward heavy kick with SA3. Just do the full target combo and it still works. Landing a machine gun blow lets you do super after, as long as you are close enough to your opponent. The third strike way of anti airing with SA3 works the same here, which is nice to see. Of course, you don't have access to the corner touch of death you get with SA1. Dudley can't complain about his universal overhead either. He can convert it to both SA1 and SA3, as well as meterless. Unlike Ken, Dudley still has a strong high-low mix-up in New Generation. And like Sean, he has absolutely no trouble converting his supers both on the ground and in the air. I can't quite tell how much not having access to his machine gun block combos hurts him in the context of the game, but you're probably good to go with his insane conversions and great high-low mix-up. I also really like that his medium kick heavy kick target combo loops on just himself. 
That way it's fine, because it doesn't affect the strength against the cast at all, and it means that mirror matches can go absolutely crazy. Being Alex is suffering. He never was a strong character, but by third strike he received a bunch of quality of life tools. Looking at his kid in New Generation, I was about to make a section a bad balance video. Instead, I tried to find as much as possible that's good about him. And I think I actually found something that may make him fun to play at worst, which I'll save for the end. But first, let's see what his main problems are. Alex is missing his crouch light kick crouch medium kick target combo. His forward heavy punch is missing too. Most importantly, Elbow isn't a new generation. Oh, and DDT is gone as well. Out of those, Elbow hurts Alex the most, since he has no other tools to punish things at long range. Compare his punish options for Ryu's based sweep with and without EX Elbow. Other characters lack EX moves as well, but for Alex it's its only tool he has at longer ranges. There's no super to compensate for this either. Next, there's Alex anti S. The second hit of Crouch Heavy Punch causes a flip out, so you can't do knee smash after. It works if you trade the first hit with the opponent's jump in, or get a very situation connect to make the second hit whiff. Standing Heavy Punch and Forward Medium Punch work about the same as in Third Strike. Standing Heavy Kick also causes a flip out, so you can't get those combo movie conversions in the corner. Superman knocks the opponent down right next to him, and you can't do any juggles after. Getting to do those juggles in third strike is pretty rare, so maybe he actually prefers getting those closer knockdowns instead. Then there's Alex's low presence, or lack thereof. As I've already said, he doesn't have his target combo. He can chain his crouch light kick even on whiff, and it looks kinda funny. But it doesn't even combo into itself. More importantly, he cannot cancel his crouch light kick at all. Not to specials, not to supers. That means Raw Crouch Light Kick, Crouch Medium Kick or Crouch Heavy Kick are Alex's only damage you'll get from low attacks. Sean can't confirm his lows to damage. Alex just can't convert them to damage at all. So what does he still have? And is there anything that's better than in 3rd Strike? First, Alex still has good range on most of his normals, and some are even a frame or two faster. As you've surely noticed by now, characters tend to do more damage than in 3rd Strike. With Alex, I feel like it's especially noticeable, even if you just get some stray hits instead of a full combo. It takes 8 standing heavy kicks to defeat Ryu in 3rd Strike. But in New Generation it only takes 6. Alex can still do his meterless combos without any issue. But if you hit Jump Heavy Punch on the last possible frame before landing, and then do a medium flash chop right away, you get this combo. It's two one-framers, but you get better damage and positioning. I say one still holds one stock, and you can still just jump out of it. Also, the special version against back turned opponents doesn't exist yet. SA2 has two stocks like in 3rd Strike, and it's post flash unblockable. It still has its issue with the last hit not properly connecting at range. But you can also still make it work better by using Standing Light Kick. His SA2 combos are the same as in 3rd Strike without the X moves. Of course it works with the optimal route. You can also still combo it after chokehold, doing massive stun. But of course any opponent will mash out of the grab and reduce the stun by a ton, so it's pretty useless as a whole. What's also fairly useless is that you can cancel two close light punches to super. But you can't buffer the super input or you get flash chop, and if you do it not point blank or take too long with the motion, the last hit will drop out and you'll either punish. 
Another fairly useless thing is anti airing with SA2. As you'd expect, it doesn't connect well at all, just like in Third Strike, but for some situations it's the best conversion he has. To end on a high note, he has one low confirm. Against standing Ryu, you can confirm crouch medium kick to SA2. Sadly, it doesn't work on anyone else. SA3 holds one bar. And it still isn't invincible on the way down. I guess since you can combo into medium chop, you can actually confirm it to it from a jump. With 4 one framers, you almost get a touch of death. Eleanor's back turn animation is longer than for any other character. This allows Alex to combo heavy chop into medium chop. He can also get medium chop into itself, but it's a one frame link. He can do a touch of death with it, and using super slows the amount of one framers you gotta hit. It's really strong, but again, Eleanor only. Most universal overheads have different animations and hitboxes than in Third Strike. For Alex it looks like his jump light punch and medium punch and has some pretty great reach as a poke. They also do way more damage and stun for most characters and Alex is one of the highest damaging ones. Look at the damage. At close range you can go into close medium kick. At mid range Alex himself seems to be too tall, but I assume he doesn't have that problem against most other characters. At far range, stand light kick to SA2 works. Be careful though, it can just go over shorter characters' heads point blank. There's one more thing I didn't touch on. Here's Alex's powerbomb, the range is the same as in Third Strike. First light, then the heavy version. Now look at this. What makes it possible is the cover will stand light kick. Look at the shadow to see Alex's position. In third strike, this amount is all you'd get. But like I said earlier, in new generation you can cover moves later than in frame 1. And this is frame 2. So instead of doing the cover on the first frame, if you do it on the second to fourth frame, you get a massive increase in range. Since the cover itself is a 3 frame window, it should be very consistent to pull off. Here you can see light flash chop without and with Kara. Look at the sprite of the move to see how much increase in range you get. Here's Alex in third strike. After a jump in combo, he can end up too far away to instantly threaten with a light power bomb. And after landing one, of course you go back to neutral, since the opponent can just quick rise your attack. Here's the sequence in new generation. Instead of whiffing light power bomb, he gets to threaten with a heavy version. Also notice how Ryu didn't quick rise. Not because I didn't make him, but because he can't. Unlike Third Strike, in New Generation Alex command grabs are hard knockdowns, so he always gets the pressure after. The Kara range of Light Power Bump is amazing. It lets him outrange a lot of longer range normals, and lets him threaten with dash command grab from farther out than Makoto in Third Strike. So, to reiterate, in Third Strike you land a power bomb right next to the opponent, and then you half screen away from them since they can just quick rise it. In New Generation, you do it from the tip of their longer range normals, get a full screen worth of corner carry, and you get to take your turn as well. After backdrop, you can even switch sides and you should be safe. Alex's amazing cover ranges allows him to play a bit more like a grappler, and getting to keep pressure after his command grabs is a huge help for him. He probably wants to stay just outside of Kara powerbomb range to bully opponents with his longer range normals and to threaten with a command grab. 
What he's lacking is the explosive damage and stun a lot of characters can dish out in single combos. But thanks to his increased stun resistance, at least he's a little more immune to those himself. I think new generation Alex has interesting and unique strengths compared to his 3S counterpart. Elena is missing a lot of moves she has in third strike. First, there's no back heavy kick, so the attack always moves you forward. Forward medium kick is missing as well. Her jump target combo medium punch heavy punch isn't a new generation either. Other target combos that are missing are heavy punch heavy kick and medium kick crouch heavy punch. She's also missing some special moves. Elena has no spin scythe and no links tail. Out of all characters, I think it's the saddest for Elena to have no EX moves. Like Alex, she has a hard time doing combos, but with EX, her combos can really skyrocket. With a different throw system, she's also missing her cutoff throw, which is notable for being among the best in third strike. Unlike Alex, she still gets to cancel her crouch light kick. The preferred jump in combo is fairly basic. If you hit heavy mallet smash, you get to link to DP. Near the corner, she gets some situational anti-air conversions. Thanks to her different anti-air parries, Elena can bully opponents with her far-range air normals a lot more. It'll be hard to punish her properly at this range. SA1 holds two short stocks. It's post-flash unblockable. With a jump in, even Elena gets a good chunk of stun. You can link to SA1 off of medium or heavy mallet smash. Like in third strike, most of SA1's damage drops out if you try to enter air with it. I never learned how to do two supers in one combo in either game, so I don't know if it's possible here. In the corner, you can extend the previously shown juggle combos by a bit. SA1 has the same range as in 3S, meaning be careful. If you hit just the tip of crouch medium punch, SA1 doesn't connect. For range, pick SA2. It's post flash unblockable as well, even from a nice distance away. It does good damage, but only stocks one bar and does no stun damage at all. Long range punishes are absolutely no problem with SA2. Your jump in combo doesn't change at all. And Mallet Smash to SA2 still works the same. Anti-airs with SA2 juggle even worse than in 3rd Strike. In the corner, you can get a follow-up with medium DP. I didn't look at SA3 all too much. When everyone just deletes your health and dishes out stun like it's nothing, getting a little bit of health back doesn't sound too appealing. This was a full healing. Either way, here's some SA3 combos. Elena's overhead can be converted meterless, as well as with SA1 and 2. If you add a DP before your super, you do a good bit more damage.
Truth be told, Elena is the character I'm the least happy with. So far, all other characters in this game have something super interesting that's not in Third Strike, so there's always something unique about them to play around with. New Generation Elena just seems to have less. I don't think she's unplayable or bad though. The different parry system makes her jump heavy punch capable of being super annoying to deal with, SA2 is great for punishes and confirms at range, and SA1 allows you to actually stun your opponent, which is a rarity for her in Third Strike. If you wanna play neutral with a simple character and feel honest doing it, she's your pick. Ibuki is a perfect example of New Generation's troubled development. Her infinite is the one thing almost everyone knows about the game, and one of the reasons why no one played it back then or today. Since this probably is the biggest coverage of New Generation since the game is MOOC videos, after the character section I want to talk more about the game's infinites and Ibuki. But first, let's look at the infinite, and then go over New Generation Ibuki just like any other character. Ibuki's infinite works on every character mid-screen and in the corner, and as it's just looping close heavy kick, of course it's meterless. It does build meter insanely fast though. Hitting it is actually kind of annoying. You need to walk forward between each heavy kick, or you'll get the far version instead. If you keep holding forward, you get forward heavy kick. And if you do it too late, the heavy kick whiffs. And if you do it too early, only the second hit of the move connects and you can't do another one. I think the way it works is that the first hit of close heavy kick resets the juggle value, and the second hit has a value of 3. The devs probably wanted Ibuki to always be able to follow it up with the jump attack, and thought that resetting the juggle value on the first hit would solve it. Since we're already talking about close heavy kick, let's talk about the glitch you most likely encounter when using it. Ibuki has her air target combo, heavy punch, forward medium kick. Holding forward during the heavy punch messes up the game. It seems to internally scramble the move you get after the heavy punch to a different one. What you get depends on the last move you did before hitting the combo that includes the jump forward heavy punch. Here are the moves that affect the follow up you'll get. If you haven't used any of these moves in the match and perform the glitch, the game will just freeze. But if you have, then instead of the game freezing, the last active follow-up that doesn't freeze the game comes out. This resets every match, so if you play Ibuki, you probably want to withstand Light Punch at the beginning of each match to make sure you can't freeze the game by accident. If you don't hold forward during your heavy punch, it doesn't trigger. It also only happens if you hit it between 20 and 34 frames after leaving the ground, which, mind you, is a fairly large window. During her air walk, Ibuki can't press any buttons. She can move and crouch, but not block. She can throw a kunai, but it soft locks her and, if the round ends with her in this state, the game. Since she can't block, she's open to attacks. But Ibuki can still jump, so she can get out on her own as well. And now for changes as a character. Ibuki's forward light kick is her far light kick in new generation. You still get stand light kick at close range. Same thing with back medium kick, in new generation it's far medium kick. 
You still get standing medium kick at close range and can still cancel far medium kick to forward medium kick. Crouch medium punch doesn't go as far as in third strike and looks kind of like a crouch light punch. You can't super jump cancel crouch heavy punch so you have to use far heavy kick. But you can cancel the super jump startup to special moves allowing for new combos. Crouch light kick can chain into itself, crouch light punch and standing light punch. Crouch medium kick doesn't exist, instead you always get the slide. Most target combos with stand heavy punch don't exist. The one exception is this one starting with close heavy punch. She also has a target combo that's not on third strike, crouch medium punch to crouch heavy punch. Her crouch heavy kick stand heavy kick target combo can be super jump cancelled on whiff, so she can make a sweep safer. Ibuki is missing two special moves. One is the fairly useless command jump, and the other is a command dash. Which is a good point to mention that the regular dash doesn't go through opponents in new generation. Neckbreaker seems the same, but instead of quarter circle forward punch, you press the kick button. Ryder travels a bit farther. Especially the heavy version, which does a huge slide here. All Tsumuji versions can do either two or three kicks, and you can always make the third one a low. But since you can just low parry all of them, there isn't really a high low mix up here. Unlike Third Strike, you can't combo any of them into the low hit or cancel to super. But like Third Strike, you still want to use the medium version, just for a different reason. If you do the third kick of medium Tsumuji, you can cancel it to neutral light punch. If you hold any direction as you do it, it won't work. It works on the frame the kick hits, as well as the two after, so it's a free frame cancel. Here's what you can do after the light punch. On standing opponents, you can go to this target combo, which is the strongest ender. But if the opponent is crouching, you can't do it, as part of the target combo whiffs. You can still go to either Ryder or Kazekiri as an ender. And on block, you can just stop short after the close light punch and continue your pressure. Now let's see what moves combo into medium Tsumuji. At range you get far instead of close light punch, so this is the only follow up you get. Close up you get the full combo. Ibuki's jump medium kick has enough hits done for her to combo out of, so this works too. With the one frame link, you can confirm it from a low. Since there's no red parry, if you drop the link and don't get punished before the medium kick comes out, you just cancel the Tsumuji to light punch and continue your pressure. Overhead is a bit tricky with Ibuki, even though she has a forward medium kick. It works fine against standing opponents, but on crouching opponents, the medium kick can just whiff, so you probably want to go for Ryder instead. It works fine on Adex though, so who it works on seems to be character specific. Not that it's a huge problem, since the space universal overhead links to close medium kick on stand and crouch anyways. With a good jump in, you can do a touch of death on characters with regular stun. But if they crouch, your route isn't as good. I'll leave you with this one before we go to her supers. Like in 3rd strike, Ibuki's SI1 holds 2 stocks. Without red parries, opponents can't parry out of it midway through. But the pushback seems really high, so you don't get to do much chip mid-screen. Here's a better mid-screen connect. And here's your best case one in the corner. 
You can combo into it from your close heavy kick. Your stand heavy kick. And confirm into it from your far heavy punch, since it combos to Hien. Unlike the other supers we've looked at so far, Ibuki's SA1 can't juggle opponents after air resets. Lastly, SA1 is the one other way Ibuki can get out of her air walk. If you do a jump SA1, most characters shouldn't be able to move forward fast enough to evade this. It's the most useful looking thing I found with Ibuki's airwalk, although that's not saying much. SA2 holds one stock. Close up, you can't jump it. And you can't block a post flash. But if you already block before the flash, the far version of SA2 comes out and you get to block it, but you have to eat the chip damage. It kind of works more like Ryder as a hit grab, which means... You get to cancel into it. With Stand Heavy Kick, you can combo into either the grab or the projectile, depending on your distance. You can use it as a cool combo finisher, but the damage falloff is pretty significant. Like with SA1, you can't air reset into it. But it kind of works both as a raw anti-air and in stun juggles. SA3 is Ibuki's best super by far. So good in fact, that it just got replaced with a different one in 3rd strike. It holds two stocks and, surprisingly, is blockable post-flash and has no invo. What makes it good instead, for one, is that it's insanely fast, punishing things better than Ken's SA3. The farther away you are, the slower it is, but the max range is pretty insane as well. You also get to combo after the super, and that includes her infinite. So anything that leads to SA3 ends the round. And not only can you do SA3 in any combo where you could get Tsumuji, but also confirm hits into SA3 where Tsumuji wouldn't work. I already showed some universal overhead stuff, but here's a summary of sort, plus some more.
Without a doubt, Ibuki's the best character in the game, and even without her infinite she's still the best. SF3 is an incredibly powerful short bar super that either gets the opponent close to stun or just stuns them right away, depending on the connect. I think it's a shame that the very much boring infinite is her strongest and most well-known tool, when its Umuji combos are actually pretty fun to do. If you play her without infinites and with SA1 or 2, I don't think she's that much better than the other characters. Most of Necro's limbs don't stretch quite as fast as they do in Third Strike, but they're also a bit faster, so there's less of a commitment to throw them out. Back Heavy Punch is on Down Back Heavy Punch, which is now Crouch Heavy Punch. If you're coming over from Third Strike, get used to mixing up your normals for a while. Back Light Kick doesn't exist, but its target combo still does, just with Stand Light Kick, so it has a bit of extra range. What makes it even better is that Stand Medium Punch can now be cancelled to specials. Your alternative is back medium kick. It's the same as in third strike, but you also have a throw on medium kick. At point blank, trying to use it would just throw the opponent instead, which is incredibly annoying especially after parries. So here, using standing medium punch or the target combo are good alternatives. Necro has no light drill, and medium and heavy have different angles. His low hit grab is just a low here, so it can be parried. Light Denji Blast can't be done indefinitely like in Third Strike, but it continues even after it connects with the opponent. The medium version does 2 hits, heavy does 3. Necro's basic Third Strike combos work without a problem. But here, Tornado Hook is a lot more juggle friendly, so his combo routes explode more than any other character. For example, with this combo you get more damage and crazy corner carry. And if you already got the corner, you can do this one, which is a bit easier to land. Don't get attacked by the second hit of Light Hook in the corner. And you better not get hit while you have Necro cornered either. The kick at the end is an overhead reset. You can parry it high like normal, but it can be timed as a meaty for what it's worth. On crouching Shotos, you can loop target combo to a medium hook. You push yourself out a little more each rep, but it's just enough to stun off of back medium kick. On Dudley it's standing only, and on him every hook to light kick is a one frame link. Since he has a higher stun resistance, you can't stun him without spending meter. That won't happen with SA1 though. It does no stun, but it has two stocks and is your best enter air super. Besides that, it's also post flash unblockable. You can add it to basically any combo you have to get some extra damage, but after longer combos it'll be heavily scaled. And if you hate meter, you can throw it away by doing stuff like this. But it's still better meter usage than SA2. It can be jumped after the flash, like in Third Strike. You can't cancel into it. And heavy spin hook to SA2 does the same damage as your meterless route. All in all, it's comfortably the worst super in the game. SA3 is where it's at. Still two stocks and you still can't enter air with it, but it still does massive stun. And thanks to the better juggles, Necro gets a follow up on everyone in the corner even without the stun. On Shoto's, back medium kick leads to a touch of death.
Same goes for Heavy Hook, of course. If you aren't point blank, your follow ups are a bit weaker. You can't stun Dudley the normal way. Of course, you have your loop again standing Dudley, so you still get the touch of death. Light hook combos can be specific as well, so here's the one for Dudley. Alex seems really easy to juggle, but you can't stun him in one combo. Also, the crouch heavy punch loop from Third Strike doesn't work here. Eleanor doesn't like being juggled, so you don't get as much. This one only works because of her extra back turn frames, but you still don't get the stun. Your light hook combo falls a bit shorter as well, but you still get a few spins in. Ibuki dislikes juggles as well. but not as much as Eleanor, since you actually get to stun her. Of course, Necro loves struggles. We even get to stun off of this starter. On twins you don't get to do too much, so you can't stun without heavy hook. Finally, Auto tends to get hit by both swings, but you still get to combo after. Necro's Universal Overhead can combo to both SA1 and SA3, although the latter is a pretty tight link. Necro's combo game feels a lot more open than it does in Third Strike, and being able to do these elaborate juggle combos without the need for stun is really cool. If you know the combos and land the tighter links, he can be really scary to fight, since he'll either put you in the corner and threaten to end the round with the next hit, or just end it right away. It feels like he should be able to keep up with other strong characters' tools. He has to put on a bit more effort due to the tight links and character-specific nature of his combos, but he definitely enjoys having those tools at all. 
I think Necro is possibly the coolest character in the generation if you come over from Third Strike. Yun and Yang were just pallet swaps in the new generation. They had different sprites, but the same moves in frame data. Over the following games, they gradually turned into separate characters. In this game, the twins are a mix between the two, but the some normals and tools neither have in Third Strike. Since they feel like a third twin, rather than just one or the other, I refer to the new generation character as twins. Here's a quick overview over the twins normals. Yun and Yang share these buttons here in Third Strike, and they are visually identical in new generation as well. These here are unique to Yun and Yang in Third Strike, and the buttons that are being lit are the ones the twins have in New Generation. As you can see, there's a few more unique Yun buttons than there are Yang buttons. Crouch Medium Punch, Crouch Medium Kick, and Jump Medium Kick don't exist in Third Strike at all. But the animation is the same as the light version, just played back slower. And here's an overview of all buttons that look the same as they do in Third Strike. For example, you recognize Crouch Light Punch from Yang and Crouch Heavy Punch from Yun. Stamp Medium Kick is greater because it doesn't exist in new generation. Instead, you always get Close Medium Kick. You can Super Jump cancel it on with and cancel the Jump Startup to special moves. The only ground target combo the twins have is Medium Punch, Heavy Punch, Back Heavy Punch. I'll just refer to it as 1, 2, 3. In the air there's a target combo as well, done by pressing Light Punch, Light Kick. We'll get back to it in a bit. Dive Kicks feel just a little faster. And with a different parry system, it seems like they're even more annoying to deal with. The twin special moves are Yun's Lunch Punch and Yang's Roll. They also have Palm and the Command Grab. Twins have a really easy time putting together combos. Far Medium Punch cancels to specials and they can easily link mediums to each other. Even from lights, twins can go to mediums, and combing into 1 to 3 is a breeze as well. Here's some more low confirms, as well as some crouching throttle specific stuff. This should give you a good idea of the basic combos with Lunch Punch. Roll combos can be a bit stronger thanks to a juggle hit after, but they're limited to close range hits. After Command Grab you can do Walk Up 1-2-3, or Walk Up Roll Combo. Now back to the Air Target Combo. You can time it in a way to make the third hit with, which actually isn't too difficult. The second hit resets the juggle value, similar to Ibuki, allowing for an infinite on everyone, anywhere. But unlike Ibuki's Infinite, this one drops on stunned opponents. <laughs> the amount of reps needed to get a touch of death makes the combo pretty annoying to do, so here's a meterless alternative. SA1 is Yang's SA2 in 3rd strike. It holds 2 stocks and is post flash unblockable. You can do it in any lunch punch combo instead of the lunch punch, and you can do it after 1 to 3 as well, so it's really easy to combo into. On top of that, you can one hit confirm it. In the corner, you can do this route. And after the mash throw, you get SA1 as well. The twins get to combo into it after the air target combo and after roll. It works after both command grab follow-ups I've shown as well. Yeah. 
SA1 can enter at a long distance, but the timing is really strict. Mid screen, it'll probably look like this more often than not. This kind of anti air works as well. SA2 is Yun's SA2 in third strike. It holds three stocks that are a bit shorter than SA1, and it's also post flash unblockable. Combo ability seems similar to SA1, and it wanna confirm to work as well. But due to its shorter reach, it doesn't work if you late cancel it at longer ranges. With 1 2 3 routes, you lose out on some damage as it doesn't juggle properly. You can just do 1 2 to super instead, which does juggle properly. But it does the same damage and less stun, so you want to do the full target combo anyways. This is the best conversion for the corner route I found. Frodo Super works with SA2 as well. SA2's short reach is really noticeable with anti S. It doesn't juggle that well, as you've already seen. And in this corner route, it drops out midway through. SA3, one shot stock, you know what that means. It's gay engine. In the rare new generation footage, you mostly see this kind of gay engine combo. But you can do a bit more than that. This is the most rewarding corner loop I've found. And as you can see, you can go from gay engine to the infinite. And even if you don't do many reps of it, you get a lot of meter back for the next SA3. Next to 1 to 3, you can confirm it with two crouch light kicks. Or two crouch medium kicks. Your jumping combo in the corner may look something like this. You can also go into Gen Agent from your air target combo. You can activate after command grab 1 to 3 and get a conversion. This also shows that you can fairly quickly get from corner to corner if you need to. Here's a different route you can do. If you're already in Gen Agent and only have a bit of time left, you can still convert like this. And if you have even less time, you can just do medium roll right away. Lunch Punch works as an easier ender, but it does less damage and gives you back less meter. Here's the thing while you're with Ganagian in the corner. I'm not really sure how often you'll find yourself in that situation though. I want to repeat myself and say that I'm sure there's a lot more things I haven't found. I'm not a Yun technician in third strike. I can do some Keeper Jin stuff, but I can't do stuff like Carapombs or Daipan loops at all, so I haven't been able to try out anything too fancy. There's more Ganagian tech unique to this game for sure. And with cards like this, I'm sure there has to be more stuff. Here's one more clip showing off two different things. First, if you set it up with medium kick, you can walk up close enough to get two pumps in a row even without Kara. 
The setups I found for this are a bit too slow to be worth it, but it doesn't seem too bad in this combo. The second thing is a strong ender, that doesn't use the air target combo at all. The twins can convert the universal overhead into SA1 and 2. Thanks to the infinite, the twins are the strongest character in the game after Ibuki. Without it, they might not stay second best, but with their really strong dive kicks in this game and their great combo routes, they'd still be up there for sure. The incredible freedom they have stringing together lights and mediums and combos is pretty unique, both compared to Yun and Yang in Third Strike, as well as the other characters in New Generation. Odo in New Generation is lacking his double jump, so this jump arc is all he gets to work with. On the upside, he has a forward throw, which got removed in Third Strike for absolutely no reason. Most of Odo's normals look exactly the same as in Third Strike, with just a few exceptions. First, his crouch medium punch uses the sprite of his crouch light punch. Then, neutral jump light and medium punch have some extra frames in the animation, making it look a bit more fluid than in Third Strike. I really like the way it looks, so I wish they could have kept it at least for jump medium punch. The biggest change to his normals is Odo's medium punch, which is a proximity normal in this game. At far range you always get forward medium punch, at close range you get stamp medium punch. You can super jump cancel close medium punch on whiff, even if there's no real situation where you can get it to whiff anyways. Odo's specials all seem similar to the third strike showing as well. The only real change, and it's a big one mind you, is that he can't combo into the ground version of his chicken scratches. It's his bread and butter in 3rd strike and gives him both decent meter list damage as well as a ton of meter. Without that combo, Odo's meter list routes look a bit different. This combo here still works, so it's one of his main routes in the generation. Alternatively, you can do jump forward heavy punch instead. It does a little less damage, but in turn a little more stun and meter build, as well as letting you continue your pressure after. For Odo, I want to pull the universal overhead section forward a bit because he gets the combo after it, even point blank and against a standing opponent with both close medium kick and with close medium punch. This easily makes Odo's overhead presence the scariest in the game, giving him great reward even without meter and without having to space it. For reference, his universal overhead hits on frame 12. It's also great for extending the range of his close normals. If you're too far away for a close medium punch but can hit a universal overhead, you can just combo into it. Of course, at that point you can just do this combo instead, for extra damage and great stun. And if you do a really late jump in, you can combo into, and then out of, his overhead for additional damage. Earlier, I showed the air version of Chicken Scratches connecting with one hit. You can actually convert after it, but against grounded opponents you don't get much. If you hit someone airborne, you get a bit more. Against Ryu, you get close medium kick instead of close light punch. Of course, you can always do this combo, so the only reason to do anything with chicken scratches is to style. Against other characters, you may get more or less. Here's Alex as an example. While we had Alex, if you do a neutral jump in right next to him, you had the perfect distance for space close medium punches. Lastly, and it's more of a mobility than a combo thing, in new generation Odo can dash under the opponent if he lands an air chicken scratch and still get a conversion. He'd really, really love to have this in third strike. Odo's super stun have X versions in new generation, so SA1 is missing the version with the leap forward. Like in third strike, the install turns all punch buttons to the throw that gives you a hard knockdown. The air version still exists as well, but the damage is comparatively low with and without scaling. The ground version just whiffs if the opponent is in hit or block stun, and since Oro can't combo into the air version without his close medium punch, you just have to pray you land it randomly. SA2 holds 3 stocks, and the button strength dictates the arc of the super, just like in Third Strike. If it knocks down an airborne opponent, it's a hard knockdown. 
Unlike Third Strike, if you have your SA2 on the screen, you can't do any projectiles. You are able to cancel your fireball to SA2, however. In Third Strike, all those SA2 is used for unblockable loops. These are done by having the opponent sandwiched between a projectile coming from one side and your character coming from the other. The game doesn't let you block in two directions at once, so just holding one direction doesn't work. In New Generation, it seems to be a bit different. Here Ryo is holding to the left and Oro does a meaty overhead. Ryo can block it. If Oro delays the overhead to hit just one frame later, Ryo gets hit. If Ryo holds right instead, he gets hit by the meaty overhead, but gets to block a delayed one. So rather than an unblockable, the best they seem to get is an unreactable and unseeable 50-50. Luckily, Oro doesn't need them. If you just reset the opponent between two hits of the super, it resets the juggle value. Remember, since air resets can't be parried out of a new generation, this is a true combo. If you get to land a reverse stand heavy kick like this, you can stun off of a cross medium punch starter. With a jump in, you can get the stun with the previous route as well. And if you have two or more bars to spend, you can really just do whatever and still get the stun in some way. I also tested SA2 on Alex, since he has the highest stun resistance. It's easier to get a backboard's heavy kick on him, but it's harder to stun him with one bar. Two bars can stun even Alex without a jump in. Auto can't do his unblockable loop in the corner, so really wants to stay mid screen in third strike. In new generation, it's no issue thanks to the air reset system. With the jump in, you get a touch of death. And you can throw more supers at the opponent in the corner just as well. Alex in the corner is about the same, just, again, less effective because he's a big boy. Other than that, you can do these types of combos with SA2 of course. It's a really freeform super, so if you just play around with it, chances are you'll find fun ways to do combos. Thank <laughs> you. 
Perfect. While SA3 doesn't have an EX version either, Odo actually gets to have a mix between the two. The Super has three stones and a long time unlike Third Strike's regular version, but it can juggle like the EX version. Just like with SA2, you can't use any projectiles while SA3 is active. The stones seem to have more recovery than in Third Strike, so at first you might drop some combos. But after some getting used to, you should be able to end the round whenever you land the super. Of course, you can do combos like this. They're still finicky, but at least on Ryu, they feel a bit easier. Odo doesn't have meterless combos as good as in Third Strike, but he's blessed with the best overhead in the game and two really good supers. His low presence isn't the best, but of course he can still do crouch medium kick to command grab, or just the command grab by itself to keep your opponent guessing. If you had his double jump, I'd probably enjoy his neutral more, since it makes it feel very unique in Third Strike, but I think even without it, and without his regular BMB, he's still one of the stronger characters in the game. I had the most fun looking at Odo's tools next to Necro, especially all the freeform combos you can do with SA2. This concludes the exploration of New Generation's mechanics and characters. Personally, I'm really happy with the findings. I hope that the game would let you do fun things you couldn't do in later games, giving it a unique flavor compared to Third Strike. And I think it delivers in that case. But I also believe that the infinites for Ibuki and the twins would get in the way enough that the other characters simply wouldn't be able to play the game. Unlike those two infinites, all the other touch of stun or death combos in the game are either character specific, require a meter, or the corner. Usually it's two or all three of those. As currently there's no real player base for this game, those that do want to play it are essentially free to decide what they want to limit or ban in order to preserve the fun. It's a big decision to make, but communities like the one for JoJo's, also on the CPS free board, made the decision to limit its infinites and even ban characters in order to keep the game fun. If not for these agreed on limitations, JoJo's would be a lot less fun to play than it is today. First, here's roughly how strong I personally think the characters are. Explanations for each character are flashing by on the site for those that really care. I have to present my own list since I haven't really found any matchup charts, tier lists or enough high level footage online. After all, the game never really saw much play. Please keep in mind that this is just my current personal opinion, and since I've barely played the game in Versus and I'm not a high level player, it's hard to guess how a lot of these findings play out in real matches. Since we can't just tell Sean players to not use Tatsuo at all because the stun output is too high, we want to bring Ibuki and the twins down a little towards him and Dudley, preferably with rules that are easy to remember. That way, the other characters can at least somewhat play alongside the stronger ones. First up is Ibuki and a close heavy kick. It's probably fine to limit this by a lot, since she doesn't actually need it. Remember that Tsumuji combos keep a plus on block, and even meterless she can stun off of a good jump in. Here's a meterless route with two reps of the close heavy kick. I think the damage and stun aren't that big of an issue, but she almost gains a full bar. If we allow just one close heavy kick instead, at least the meter build is kept to about 80%. This should be fine, and the route is what she'd do in third strike anyways. A big issue is the infinite synergy with SA3, and really, SA3 itself as well. Here's two reps after the super. She doesn't quite get the stun, but after most of her confirms, she does. Considering how short the bar is and how easy it is to land the super, this is pretty overpowered. Even allowing one rep is still too strong, in my opinion. If we ban any usage of close heavy kick after SA3, she still gets this ender. I frequently use it in a segment to showcase its damage and stun output. I think it's still very strong, but it may be fine. If it's still too strong, it could be limited further without outright banning the super as a whole. Here's Ibuki's options if she's not allowed to do any jump normals after the super either.
Of course, one could always ban doing any follow-up at all, making it function more like Ibuki's SA3 in Third Strike. Next up are the twins and their air target combo. If two reps are allowed, a jump in is just shy of stunning most characters. In the corner, they actually get the stun, but of course don't have any reps left for the follow-up combo. I think the twins' SA3 should also count as one rep, just like with Ibuki's SA3. Ganeja makes it really easy to combo into the infinite, and they have strong enders without the air target combo as well. Here, Yun hits one rep, and then uses the second rep with the Ganejan activation. Because of this, he has to use an ender without the air target combo after Ganejan. I think that this limitation lets him keep the strong tool, while both lowering the chance of it becoming a touch of death, as well as making more creative Ganejan enders viable. I made two sets of rules to choose from. Of course, these are just my opinion, and there's no actual reason to follow them. The first is a light ban. Ibuki gets to use one close heavy kick in a combo, and none if she uses her SA3. So, the best follow-up for a super should be her jump target combo. The twins can use two reps, and one if they use SA3, just like I presented in the previous clips. The second is a heavy ban. Ibuki is still allowed to use one close heavy kick in her combos. After all, else she'd not be allowed to use the button at all. But, she can't do any follow-ups after SA3. This may be necessary if the super is deemed too strong with how easy it is to build buff for her, as well as how easy it is to hit and how much damage and stun it does. The twins get to use just one air target combo instead of two reps, so after Ganajin, they aren't allowed to use it at all. This means they have to opt for routes without the air target combo after landing SA3. If you play matches with friends or run tournaments, feel free to use either of these as templates for your rule set. If both end up being too little or too much of a limitation, it should be easy to adjust them accordingly. Finally, I'd like to thank everyone who helped me with making the video, and everyone whose videos are suggested in the corner. Special shoutouts go out to number one Fudi Kudi fan, Akira, and number one Ashtanojo fan, Asayas. I send both clips for feedback almost daily, and they help me a ton with fine tuning. Please watch both anime and or read the manga. The shows are both really great. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this exploration of new generation as interesting as I did loving these things. Feel free to leave a comment or share it around if you'd like, yada yada. Here's a CMV with a song from New Generation's arranged soundtrack to end the video. The point of Petro. I drop these lyrics for my people in the ghetto. I keep the flavor from night to morn, and just like an alkaline, I keep going strong. Another angle just to keep flexing. This is like a drill, yo. But I'm testing my unusual styles of rap. Then I fix it around from the beginning to the middle within a flash.
they start breaking No, it's forsaken To think that I can be taken Cause I'm your highness The rap finest You can't deny this Dig a little deeper Yo, I'm sure that you will find this Style of mind As a dope speech I'm intellectual Now I have to teach Supporting my territory I call props And all the faded perpetrators They're getting knocked Just get involved with the rhythm, the rhymes I give them full with impact. Your brother, listen, there's no stopping this style like the apocalypse. It's 97, yo, check the way I'm dropping this. You must be joking, kid, yeah, I may be smoking. You can't take me out, yo, my style is doping. Word up, I'm catching wreck like that. It's 97, yo, it's street fighter game, shit is fat. 